Once upon a time, there was a girl who loved making miniature models and dollhouses, and everyone came to her YouTube page and liked and subscribed. The end. Okay, okay, okay. That's not the intro to this video. Hi guys, I'm Miss Mini Life. Welcome back to another video. Uh, welcome for the first time if you are new. Let's hear it for everyone's favorite recycling material, cardboard. I've never built a house out of purely cardboard before and honestly, I thought it was going to be a disaster. But I have to say, I actually really enjoyed using it for this project. And the nice thing about cardboard is I'm sure we all have packages from Blamazon or Blalmart or some other company like that that I don't want to say their names because they're not sponsoring me just lying around in our houses so why not go ahead and recycle those into a fairy tale house diorama so another new technique that I tried out for the first time on this build is using egg carton for the bricks. I had heard about this all over the internet, but I never actually gave it a try until now, and it's amazing. Just like using the cardboard turned out to be a really good idea, these are my new favorite way to make bricks. You get so much texture and it looks so nice for so little effort with this because the egg carton's already kind of textured and then you can easily chop it up into tiny little squares. I will say it does take a long time to glue them individually into place. Depending on the size of your project, you might not have the patience for that. But for this tiny house, I think it made a huge difference to the overall look of the project. Now this cardboard is actually thinner cardboard that I got from a cereal box and I'm using that for a lot of the decorative pieces on the tiny house like the edges of the roof and some of the parts of the door and also I used it to make the chimney. Oh hey look it's my cat. So another thing you guys might just have lying around your house, and if not, you can pick it up for super cheap, are these coffee stirs. These are what I'm using for all of the wooden parts of the building. Um, as you can see, for some reason, my cat does not like me to be using these. I don't think I ever did figure out what he had against these, but <laughs> he usually um, helps me with my projects anyway. So I'm used to working around paws flying all over the place. I probably should have cut out the door and the windows while um, the cardboard was flat, but <laughs> I forgot to do that. So here I am just cutting it out now to replace it with wood. To give these wooden design elements a little bit more texture, I scratched them up using my X-Acto knife. And then I glued them to some more cardboard using hot glue. I usually tend to avoid using hot glue in most of my projects and that's simply because I usually get strands of hot glue that go everywhere and leave like spider webs all over the projects. So if anyone has a solution that they found to this problem, if you leave it down in the comment section, I will love you forever and I'll give you a heart on your comment <laughs> and that'll really help me out. Thanks. But other than that one downside, hot glue is amazing. Okay, the roof shingles. This is one of those super satisfying but takes a long time things to do <laughs> in a project. I placed all of these individually and tried not to burn my fingers on the hot glue, but I love the finished effect. 
And after doing this roof, I was super excited to start painting this project. I did have one concern and I thought that because the acrylic paint was kind of watered down that it might cause all of this cardboard to warp and start being all saggy. So my solution was to use Mod Podge and white glue to form sort of a waterproof barrier over the whole thing. And then I thought, oh, I'll go ahead and add texture to this by adding in some baking soda, um, which I've used this mixture to create texture before and create like mud and dirt. Except, this wasn't baking soda, <laughs> it was baking powder. It was baking powder, so it didn't quite um, have the effect that I was anticipating, although it still did create texture on the outside of the building. Whether uh, that texture is better or worse than it would have been with baking soda, I have no idea, but I did go ahead and paint over it, and I still like the finished product. And highlighting the roof shingles and the bricks was a lot of fun. This is where it really starts to show how much texture you get with that, those egg carton bricks and why it's worth it to put shingle by shingle on top of the building. All right, let's talk about making the wolf. So Wolfie here actually had two incarnations. The first wolf I made was super chonkers, way too chubby and didn't look realistic at all. Um, but it was pretty much my first time sculpting. So I, I forgave myself for that. But of course I had to start over and make him again. I think the main thing that went wrong is that his like foil skeleton was way too fat in the beginning and on the second version I made it a lot thinner so that his overall body could be less big. <laughs> I used a printed image of a wolf for reference as to what his body shape would look like and also to kind of measure as I went along to make sure he was the size that I wanted him to be so that he would be able to reach the top of the house. So a few videos ago I told you guys that I did not like using polymer clay and I said I was going to try and use it in some upcoming videos and this is one of those excuses I had to go ahead and force myself to work with this kind of material. I'm using Sculpey Firm Polymer Clay and I do like this clay better because it's not so soft and sticky. So when I use tools on it, they don't stick to the clay and I can actually move it and manipulate it in a way that I want and then have it stay like that and not get smudged the moment it gets touched or anything like that. The tools that I'm using here are some that I just improvised from having a bunch of random things in my house. I'm using this metal nail cleaning tool that I got from CVS a million years ago and pretty much never actually used to do manicures on myself. And then I'm also using some paper crafting tools like this sharp pointy awl that's just used for making holes in paper and some embossing tools. And actually, they all seem to work pretty well. I think you can improvise carving tools um, fairly easily for this clay, which is something I like because I didn't want to go out and purchase a ton of new tools. And speaking of that, I'm still in the process of trying to figure out what tiers to put on my Patreon. So eventually, people who want to help out the channel and support will be able to and then I'll be able to get new tools and do some new um, things with like programs and things like that uh, assuming it all goes well but um, that's coming hopefully in a month or two so keep on the lookout for that uh, but I as of yet haven't set that up so we're doing everything with just what we have on hand And also, once again, I do just want to say thank you to all of the people who have subscribed and who continue to watch the videos. Even if you're not subscribed and you watch the videos or you share them or you leave nice comments, 
that's so awesome. I'm always shocked that anyone is watching. So thank you so much. And I really appreciate you. Okay, back to the diorama. So the paint that I'm using is just this cheapo acrylic paint from the craft store. And what I would recommend is not to use these paints when you're painting polymer clay. They tend to dry really um, dull and chalky. It could be something that I'm doing in the application, but I have used paints that are a little bit more pricey and are designed for painting miniatures, whether they're like wargaming, tabletop gaming miniatures, or anything like that. And those have much more pigment I have found and cover the um, model a lot better. So I would recommend actually if you're going to choose one place to invest, to invest it in your paints. But I mean, if you want to ignore that advice, that's fine too. I certainly used the cheaper like dollar paints for this. Um, wolf and he still came out all right he's not like disgusting or anything <laughs> by any means so you can still use whatever paints you like on the project I'm not gonna tell you how to make your art I rescued two books from the thrift store to be converted into art. I felt a little bit weird tearing up a book, especially as a lover of reading, but I just kept reminding myself that most of the stuff in there, if it's on the last chance and it doesn't get sold, they throw it away anyway. So better it be turned into a diorama than that, right? So I stained the book to make it look older using some instant coffee and then I ripped out a few pages to make the trees and grass and bushes that are going to go in this enchanted forest. After drawing out all of the shrubbery, I cut it out with an X-Acto knife, which took forever. Way longer than I thought it would take, but in the end, I was happy with the result. And then I'm using the insulation foam that I love so much in most of my projects and I'm creating a rocky base to put the house on. I really wanted this book to look like it was enchanted and was starting to sprout this scene out of the middle of the book and that one day if nurtured and watered the enchantment might create this thing full scale in the middle of my living room. So <laughs> that is the effect I kept in mind while I was putting in all of these trees and tiny bushes and then later I add some moss to the base so that it looks as if it's starting to grow and come to life.
And then completely forgot about Red Riding Hood because I was so focused on the wolf, who's actually my favorite character in most of these stories. And <laughs> I decided to toss in her hood to tie it all together. So I just used some red paper and attached it to a tree. And then this is the finished product. I hope you guys enjoyed the build and let me know if you had a favorite fairy tale growing up or if there's one that you'd like to see as the next diorama in the series. And as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video, like it, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.